Uh, welcome to episode, fun, episode so. two of our Vibe Live no, Next Gen it's series. So My name is Justin Swallows. Tonight, yeah, I'm co-hosted by our oh, chief sorry. content officer, Matt Maltesta, and our special guest tonight, the Woodlands quarterback, class 2024, Mason McCallor. Maybe how are you doing? Good. How are y'all? Doing good, man. Um, so, obviously, Mabry, this year for you uh, was your first year starting uh, for the Woodlands. You passed for 2,461 yards, threw 25 touchdowns, rushed for 444 yards, and rushed for 15 touchdowns as a sophomore. And you were the district MVP. What did you feel about your season this year? I mean, it definitely could have been better. I wanted to take our team to state, but unfortunately – that didn't happen, but my goal at the beginning of the year was to uh, be the district MVP, and I just wrote that on my mirror in my bathroom, and I scratched it off once I got it. So I have more goals to put on there for next football season, but it was good to reach some of those. So how cool is it, like you were saying earlier, that you, you're moving your brother to McCabe, played at St. Pius, played at the Woodlands, was a star at Cal, and he went in the transfer portal, and now he's at OU. You're helping yes, him into the dorm now. I mean, how cool is that to be able to see, like, a firsthand of what college football life and recruiting is like? Well, tomorrow, me and him are both going on a visit together here, so it's pretty sweet. But it's definitely been an experience. It's been super cool. What have you learned from him, or what have you learned from watching him – have success in the college game early and, you know, now make another big step to go to OU. I mean, what is that, what is that kind of taught you about the business of college football? Um, I mean, he's just shown that, like how much work ethic he has and he's instilled that kind of into me. And so that's kind of helped me move on to where I am right now. And I just need to keep doing what I've been doing and hopefully I'll get to where he's at. Maybe obviously – Last year didn't end how y'all wanted it to. What is something in the off season that you're going to be working on, whether it's in seven on seven or just privately working out? What's something that you're going to do to up your game for next year? Definitely make sure that the me and like all the receivers on sync. Make sure we got the route route combos and stuff like that all all worked up. Get it right. Okay. You, you know, talk about. Um, here's what's weird to me. Okay. So you're a sophomore, you come in, and now you're the quarterback and have to take kind of a leadership role as a sophomore. I mean, I think you kind of have those qualities in, but anyways, but what is that like kind of directing older players? I mean, I kind of – I mean, I knew it comes with a position. I mean, I like, I like being the leader on the team. I like having that, like, the stand, so – I think it's – I mean, sometimes it's a little weird because, like, you're way younger than some of the guys and <laughs> it's weird telling them what to do and stuff, but that's what the leader and the quarterback has to do for the team, so. So, maybe obviously you've been kind of highly recruited so far. You've got offers from Kansas State, LSU, Florida, SMU, Baylor, Arkansas, and more. And also you just got North Carolina uh, this past week, I think. Yes, sir. Um, what is the recruiting – process been like for you so far and then I know you just said you had you're going on a little unofficial visit with OU do you have any other visits lined up for you I mean it's definitely been unbelievable I didn't know it was going to happen this fast um I'm very thankful for the man upstairs who's been helping me and uh I have Arkansas planned I'm planning to go to Arkansas visit up there and then I'm going to go to North Carolina sometime this month and watch a basketball game and stuff you no, are probably. a little bit of a hooper. I saw – I was at the Oh, uh, yeah, a little bit, oh, a little Lord. bit. <laughs> that Woodland Willis game, I was looking for one highlight in that game, and it took me all – it took me a while to catch it. All I right. tried, I tried. <laughs> what are you watching on Netflix? And I'm, I got – I got – I'm going to take you on this ride real quick. What am I watching on Netflix? Well, I don't really watch, like, like seasons or anything. Like, probably the last, like – season or like tv show i watched probably like outer banks but okay like last movie i watched was the strangers and it was pretty good it was scary dude you look like you're a character on outer banks bro you can be like <laughs> uh, strutting right into central casting all, all right. i need is the bandana this is embarrassing i would tell you a full disclosure embarrassing moment 
I'm watching Cheer on Netflix. I know, don't judge. <laughs> these these people have such dog in them. Like these they're these guys and girls. I'm just like, dang, they work so hard. How do you develop as an athlete kind of that dog mentality? Some people have it. Some people just simply are never going to have it. But how do you kind of develop that and also get your team to kind of develop that? I mean, you either got it or you don't. But, I mean, yeah, you kind of just have it or you don't. I mean, it's instilled to you by your parents, I feel like. Like, my parents definitely instilled that into me when I was younger. So, so maybe. Your brother played at Cal, now is at OU. And then also you have a family friend and Grant Canell, who's now at Memphis, was highly recruited too. You kind of grew up watching them get recruited. What is something that you've taken from both of them through their recruiting process that you're using now or, or there were things that you saw that you wanted to do differently? Don't take anything for granted. And, like, those small schools that recruit you, those coaches can leave it. And, like, they can go to a bigger college, so stay in touch with those coaches. All right, the highlight that kind of went viral <laughs> was you jumping over the guy. Uh, yes, sir. It, I'm like, I did not know he had it like that. What What are you thinking when you're like, hey, I'm just going to maybe jump over this guy and go in for a touchdown? Okay. Is this all impromptu type stuff or what? Okay, so I got a story for you all. So that yes. day we had a pep rally at our school, and I was, like, talking to one of my receivers. I was like, today I'm going to hurdle somebody. <laughs> like, And I've been, like, imagining it all day. And then, <laughs> sure enough, we come to the game, and I heard all that guy in score. So <laughs> that what was that would be my lead highlight on huddle. I gotta fix my huddle highlight. It's too long. <laughs> I gotta put everything yeah. together. That's fire, dude. That's it it fire. just takes a long time. <laughs> what did that college park game mean for you and your team? I mean, obviously, there's a rivalry there. College Park beat y'all last year. This year, there's a lot of hype going into the game. What did it mean for y'all to win yeah. that game and take back the district? I mean, it, was, it felt super good because we we lost last year, and it was good to gain that back. And the next two years, hopefully, we'll get it. I mean, we'll, we will get it, but Ooh, like okay. we're we're not, we're not heading for like a district championship. We're heading for state. Like that's our team goal. Like we're not we're not gonna set ourselves short. Okay. When I noticed, I remember last year y'all played spring. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this could be really ugly. And we were doing the TV game for the spring mm -hmm. playoff game. And I'm like, you, they put you kind of in the second half, and you start moving the ball, running. You're very comfortable running. But there's a lot of chirping. And you're a freshman. I'm like, oh, my God, dude, this dude's a freshman. <laughs> the confidence that you kind of have is kind of well beyond your year. Do you take that from people you watch, from a Wigman? Or from somebody in college or in pros, it's like, hey, I'm the quarterback. This is this is my vibe. This is how I'm supposed to be. I think I kind of got it from my brother a little bit because if you yeah, like it, so watching him play, he's kind of nasty. Like he's mean on the field, That's and right, so boy. <laughs> and so I think I kind of got that from him. But I, I definitely like like show, you have to share dominance on the field. I feel like so. You kind of have an interesting um, relationship with a fellow quarterback just down the road in your district. Tell me about your relationship with DJ Lagway and just kind of what it's like having a guy that you can compete against that y'all can both kind of just push each other to be y'all's best. I mean, both of y'all are getting recruited pretty highly right now. What What's y'all's relationship? I mean, I, I met DJ. We've probably known each other for about, like, maybe a year or so, but – it's it's great having another quarterback in our district that's like me, and it kind of helps us both compete to our highest abilities. And I just wish the best for both of us. And so, in in this process, who's been kind of the coolest person, or just kind of off the wall person that you've been able to meet? Like coach wise, coach wise, player wise, or you're on the sideline and you're walking up and Matthew McConaughey's there, just <laughs> just some weird that that the um, recruiting path has taken you so far? Well, I mean, I went, to a I went to a game at ASU, and at that game, there was a fox run on the field. That's probably the weirdest moment ever. <laughs> a fox. 
That's crazy. That is weird. Yeah, it, was, it was super weird. We, everyone thought it was like a rabbit or a dog or something. Then they zoom in and it's a <laughs> fox running on the field. So, Mabry, what was probably your favorite visit, unofficial visit that you've gone to so far, Mabry? Maybe your favorite memory from a visit. What would be your favorite memory from a visit so far? Um, probably – LSU, because that was probably that was like my first like super like big time offer. I feel like, and uh, I I went to a camp not knowing I was gonna get that offer. Um, so I go, we we're like doing the camp stuff, whatever, and then everyone goes on break, and then Coach O and Coach Pete's the quarterback coach, the OC there. Um, they meet me in the middle of the field, and then they bring my mom over from the sideline, and they offer me right then and there, and then we leave camp early, and then. We, like, ride a golf cart around campus. Then they take me and do a photo shoot, go on the field. It was a super cool deal. That sounds awesome, man. Because that was my first time doing that. So, I thought it was amazing. Oh, yeah. You know, you talk about, like, when you become this kind of highly recruited guy, you get everybody's best game. Everybody's talking. Everybody's coming after you. If they, if they sack you, you know, there's all, there's all kind of – talk what what is that like or do you just kind of feed into that I, mean, I like it because i'm gonna give every team that i play my best effort so i mean i'm not worried about it <laughs> oh yeah what did you take away from this year's team obviously y'all didn't end the season how you how you guys wanted to but what did you take away from some of these senior leaders like Ben Ferguson and uh, Evan Dubin and some of these other uh, – Martrell Harris and just some of y'all's leaders on the team. What did y'all – what did you take away from some of these? Well, I thought they were definitely great role models on and off the field. Um, they're definitely great Christian guys, and I loved being around them, great people. And I just thought, like, our whole team around it was just a big, like, family bond. It was super cool. You know, talking – y'all played Bridgeland. Um, Connor Wigman, he's the quarterback of the year. Um, he's going to Texas A&M, dual sport guy. You kind of got to see him firsthand also. Yeah, what, what I actually just worked like? out with him like a week ago. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what's that relationship like? What do you learn from him? Or how, has he given you any advice? I mean, it was super cool playing someone like who's better than me and like who's like highly recruited and stuff like that. And he's going to A&M. And it made me play to my best because I was like, dude, I want to beat him super bad. Like, that would be super cool. But – uh I mean, I, I worked out with him like a week ago. It was good seeing like the way he like the way he moves, like his mechanics. So, how many Trevor Lawrence references do you get <laughs> on a weekly basis? Too many, way too many. <laughs> Especially if I walk in the airport, like I oh, have people I take imagine. pictures with me in the airport because I think I'm Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> so. Maybe obviously football isn't the only thing to do. You also play basketball, but you also do stuff in the community. Um, you and your brother have been involved with a charity, and you guys have been doing some things with them. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that charity and what y'all are doing? What y'all are kind of raising money for. So me and my brother have been raising money for the Ronald McDonald House, which is like a house where people like that live all around the world can come and stay when they're getting medical treatment in Houston. So it's like this house in the middle of all the hospitals, so it's super easy to get around, like, if you need, like, medical attention super fast. So me and my brother decided that we're going to raise money for a wheelchair-accessible playground. And so we raised 55000 ourselves, and then somebody else matched our bid. And so we have – that was 110000 Then someone gave us an, another 100000 and then someone gave us 25000 So now we're at $235,000. That's awesome, man. I mean, it's great that you're a young kid and you're getting involved with your community already. Um, that's something that a lot of kids your age wouldn't necessarily get involved with at this point in their life. So that's pretty awesome. Thank you. Hey, is is there some sort of home improvement show going in the background with McCade hanging pictures in the store? Oh, oh yeah, y'all want to see the <laughs> man yeah, stuff into my wall? <laughs> Hold on, let me see how to flip this thing. He's hanging up oh, lights, he's putting up an American flag. Okay. Say, oh, it's Texas yeah, yeah. Say hi. Hello. 
<laughs> He's got his Texas flag up. Perfect. Yeah, that's even. Well, so, hey, you know, some people also might not know that, you know, your uncle also played in the NFL for like 15 years. You know, Rex yeah, Tucker yes, sir. played yeah. at A&M, offensive lineman. So it's kind of like you're born to do this. You know, when did, at what point in your life did you think, hey, this is my destiny? Was it like when you were in SEFL Little League or was it in middle school? When did you think, hey, this is going to be what I'm going to do? Well, I mean, I always knew I wanted to play football, but – I, okay, so, like, my story is I was O-line from, like, second grade all the way to sixth grade, and then I was receiver from seventh to eighth. And then ninth and tenth grade were my two quarterback years, so this upcoming year will be my third year playing quarterback. But um, right when I started playing quarterback, I was like, dang, this is definitely for me. Like, this is what I want to play. This is, like, what I want my job to be. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mabry, what are you looking for in a school uh, as you get closer to kind of making some decisions, deciding who your top 10, top five, whatever that may be? What are you looking for in a school? I'm looking to see, like, where, like, my best fit is. Like, coach, like, have a great relationship with the coach and, like, um, hold on. Uh, just, like – I'm just going to, like, pray about it and, like, pray to God to see, like, where's my best fit and stuff like that. So, oh, shoot. Just going to pray about oh. it. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to run you through the gauntlet. We're going to go five super fast questions. All right. Whatever okay, okay, to... okay. All right. People, get prepared for this. I'm ready. Celebrity dream date is number one. Margot Robbie. Or that, how do you say her name? Margot yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What about um, dream car? Dream car, probably a Ferrari. Favorite vacation spot that you've gone to or you haven't gone to yet? Uh, probably Hawaii or Costa Rica. Favorite subject? Uh, exactly. No. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm good at subjects, but I don't like to do them. <laughs> I'd rather not right. them. Okay, and then finally, favorite movie, sports or non-sports? Ooh, well, I just watched the new Kurt Warner movie. That's probably one that of my favorite good. movies. I, I love that movie. That was a great story. Yes, super cool story. Yes. So, maybe I got one more question to you, okay. for you, and then we'll kind of open up. Uh, if anyone in here wants to ask maybe a question, just keep it appropriate. You guys can go ahead and start asking <laughs> those. Um Maybe what's it like playing with your cousin who is on the offensive line blocking for you? Um, probably one of the most underrated offensive linemen in Houston. Uh, what's it like playing with someone that you've grown up with? So last year, I actually got to play with both of them. My, co my Okay, so my older cousin was a center. And then my, young, my uh, cross, Tucker, who plays with me right now, was the left guard. And, I mean, it's been such, like, a blessing, and it's been amazing. And he's very uh, – he's amazing. Like, he's super good, like, super big. Like, he can block anything for me. And just, like, having that connection on the field is super cool. I bet, man. It's it's different playing with someone that you that you have that bond with already. Exactly. So, if anyone has any questions for Mabry, we'll go ahead and ask them. If you all just can comment the, put those in the comments. All right, so when you come back, you come – I mean – you're back in. You're back in the woodlands. Then you taking any visits or do any camps? What's the camp circuit like? So, uh, so right now, after after the visit tomorrow, I'm flying to Panama City for a seven on seven tournament. Then I fly back Sunday. And then NFL, okay, here's some questions. NFL. What team would you want to be drafted to in the NFL? I don't have like a specific team. I like I would like to be on like the coast, like west or east coast. Probably the east coast. I don't. Not the West Coast. <laughs> What's the best college atmosphere you've been to so far? Definitely the Florida versus Alabama game. That was crazy. Wow. Nice. That was super cool. Would you want to be – would you want to – if you had the ability to, would you want to play with your brother at OU if he was there for that long? Yes, for sure. <laughs> that would be so sick. 
He'd be like 70 years old. I mean, can he still play when he's 70? <laughs> I don't I mean, know. Guys, guys in, the, in college football that are like 26. I his don't knees, get his, his knees might start getting bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that age, you know. What was your most memorable game this season? Mm, probably the College Park versus us. Because that, that was like – that was either to tie for district or for us to win district. So, definitely that game. The Woodlands baseball – are asking if they're if you're going to make any you're going to make any appearances at the Woodlands baseball games. Don't worry, Harrison. I'll come cheer you. <laughs> Ain't nobody want to watch no baseball. <laughs> oh, let's see. I think we had one more. Um. Oh, I actually have a question for you. So obviously, you grew up uh, an Aggie fan, but what is your dream school? What was your dream school growing up? And also, what would be your dream offer for you, or like so, something that? I mean, I don't really, I don't really have like a dream school now. But when I was a kid, I had a dream school, and that was a And M. But when I when I started getting older and I started getting recruited, that that kind of changed because you're you're gonna go where like what what's your best fit, not like what you've grown up being like wanting to go to, if you know what I mean. We got a. It looks like we got an Aggie fan asking, what should we expect from Martrell Harris at Texas a An amazing athlete. He's crazy good, and he'll put on a show for y'all. What is your go-to Whataburger order? Uh, patty melt with that extra sauce. With extra sauce. The patty melt is very popular with the kids. Or the, hey, honey butter butter chicken, or the honey butter chicken biscuits also really good. Yeah, so. I'm not mad at that either. You're not mad at either. All right, man. Well, hey, thanks for the time. Tell your fam hi. And yes, sir. Keep us updated as it relates to recruiting and how it's, you know, how it's going. And, you know, don't be a stranger. I will. I'll text you all. All right. Perfect, man. All right, sweet. All right thanks, Thank everybody, you. for coming in. Uh, make sure you all tune in next week for episode three. And we'll see you all later. Bye.